So today, we're going to replace a battery in a Sega CT2. This battery, like all batteries, uh, maintains the, the save game memory. First thing we do is we take out six screws with a standard Phillips screwdriver. We're getting lucky all the uh, screws are coming out with the screwdriver. Instead of being in the hole, oh, this one might not come out. They're all the same length, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. There we go. They're all out. So, put it back up. Open up there. Take out any games you got in there. Oh, come on now. There we go. There. Now we got the lid off. The battery's under here. We don't have to worry about the CD, about the CD drive. So, find the screws holding the shielding on. Put those over here. Come on. All right, that appears to be all of them. Gently pull the shielding up. There we go. Set that aside. Now we'll get the board out, and then we're gonna do that. We're gonna pull out this ribbon cable. Might be a little tough, but it'll come out. Then you gotta remove the LED here. The, uh, the accessing the CD LED. Undo this tape. All right. Should pop right. Whoops. Did I miss something? Oh, resistance. So. Oh. There's a couple screws on either side of the expansion slot here. And there's the other one. There we are. Now it should come right out. Yep. Lifts right out. Okay. Set that aside. Someplace safe. Now the battery that goes in here is an ML 2016. Here's the one I'm going to replace it with. ML means it's rechargeable. So this one that goes in the Sega CD is a rechargeable battery. So you don't want to be replacing it with um, with like double A's or anything. I mean, technically you can, but yeah, that's that's not a good idea. So first we got to find the pins. There's three pins. There's one for the negative on the bottom, and two for the positive on the top here. And it looks like. Okay, this is definitely the negative, and there's a positive, and there's a positive. They're sticking out higher. So, and I don't think a solder sucker is going to do much here. We'll give it a try, though. What we'll do is we'll heat up the solder pad, add a little solder. Then, we'll take our solder sucker and see what happens. I don't think that did a darn thing. Nope. Not really. So, I think we might be forced to use the pliers. I don't really have a way to hold this, this board. 
here. My helping hands really isn't big enough, you see? I think, yeah, you can kind of rest it up against there. I think that'll work. All right, grab the pliers. Turn it so I can actually see the work. And what we'll do is we'll grab the negative, negative pin, and we'll heat the pin from the other, the other side ever so gently pull it out. Oops. It's <laughs> all right. I need one of those. They make uh, they make vices specifically to hold large circuit boards. I really should pick one of those up. There we are. All right, now I can grab the battery itself. Carefully paying, paying close attention because there's a lot of surface mount parts on this side. Tiny, tiny things. Just pry it out. There we are. There's one. And here's the last one. There we go. There's the old battery. Toss that aside. Now we got to check our holes, and I don't think any of them are clear. None of them are clear. Darn. So we're going to have to do that thing where we heat up one side of the circuit board and suck the solder out from the other. Luckily, there's a lot of open space here on this side of the board, so we'll do that first, this one first, because it's kind of easy to get to now that everything's out of the way. Let's see if that did it. Does not appear to have done it. It's okay. We can try again. That cleared it. See that pretty well, pretty well there. All right. Put a tad of solder on the iron again to help. If your iron's not transferring heat, just put a little solder on it. That'll probably help it clear. Now the other one, okay. That one's right here. Always double check what you're heating. It's one thing you don't want to get wrong. Yep, that cleared out that hole really well. All right, final step, the negative one. This one's real easy to get to. No problem at all. Do it. That did it. Wow. That went really easy. I'm almost worried how easy that went. <laughs> All right. So this one's bent to heck. So this is the old one. Kind of lost track of where I put my battery. All right. So the ML 2016, again, like all these batteries, the writing is on the positive side. So the positive side has these two prongs. Negative side with no writing on the bottom has a one. And this should fit in these holes really well. Yep. This in the negative. Whoops. Dang it. Not a big deal if it bends. Just kind of frustrating is all. All right. 
Let's try that again. There we go. That as far as it goes, that's as far as it's going to go. So we'll take our tape. Tape the battery down so it doesn't move. There we are. And I will heat, I'll, uh, I'll put solder on the, on the negative side because that's only one point. And if something, if, it, if the battery shifts for some reason, it'll be easier to put it back. These aren't very big pads, so you don't want to put too much solder on there. I think that looks good. All right. Now we'll just, a little too much solder on there for my taste. Come in here and same for the positive. Get that. Yeah. Again, not very big pads. Sometimes it's hard to see what they're doing, what's going on. Of course, when you're doing this, you'll probably have the advantage that you're not taping it. And you'll be able to get, get right in there. I gotta kind of stay out of the camera. So, final positive. All right. I think these three solder points are pretty decent. If I do say so myself. I'm the only one here, so nobody's going to argue with me. So, <laughs> all right, now let's get this put back together. Take the, the bottom of the case. And while the board is out, I think I'll try to put this ribbon cable back in. While the board is, isn't locked down. It's going to push a little. There we go. Needs to be in there solid. I'll lift up this tape. Let's see. All right. Put the LED back. Then I don't have to worry about whether or not I did it. Hmm. There we go. No, this is not the wrong, it's not the right screw, it's the wrong screw. These screws must not all be the same length. Yeah, the silver screw, at least mine's slightly silver colored, is a little bit shorter. So that's the one that puts, holds the LED on. So if I said they were all the same length before, I was wrong. And I apologize for that. All right, now we'll put on either side of the expansion slot here. All right, take our shielding, put it back where it belongs. There we go. Check all around. Make sure it's the way it's supposed to be. All right. And now take our remaining screws. Button this up here. Then we can take our top. Now we want to be careful with this. We want the door open. Just got to watch out for this because that tells us, this tells the machine whether the door is open or closed. So if we open the door, gently put it on, 
and the door closes nice. If it didn't, if you felt any abnormal resistance, you'd know something was wrong. And you should stop and assess what's going on before you continue. You almost never have to force any of these kind of things. If you find yourself having to force it, probably something's gone wrong. All right. Okay, the door opens. Schmutz off there. Okay. Let's give it a shot. See if it works. All right. Let's see here. Okay, built-in memory, please format. Normal. Format the system memory. Yes. All right, now let's copy something to the system memory. Yeah, okay. All right, so now we turn it off and turn it on. Press C to go into the menu. There we go. Oh, dang it. Reset that. There we go. My TV's kind of slow to sync up, so. All right. Memory. And it's still there. Okay, all right. Cool. It worked. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my battery replacement video for the Sega CD2. I have other battery replacement videos in the links above. And don't forget to check out my game reviews too.